Are we humans free? I'm wondering what is it to have a future? Is God angry with us? And the truth shall bear witness of itself. Restorative justice, Brad Kayla, PhD. Does it mean that we must cut off the past to have a future? Help, help. I need your help, folks. Help. Hi. This is Robert Solleveld, also known as Brer Kela, PhD. You guys haven't heard from me for a very long time. And that's almost by design because I was kind of burned out after 300 videos. And I wanted to share a message that's not exactly standard. Becoming aware of the deception that is going on in society. We've lived and basically grown up with something that we were familiar with, a lie, a major lie that is available in politics and banking and in religion. And that part has really, really, really hurt me. Now, today, I'm celebrating my 45th anniversary. Some people helped me when I started out 45 years ago. My wife and I needed some help. And friends from the community, from Ambon really stepped up to the plate to help us celebrate our anniversary. At that time, we got married. That was in 1976. And I want to show my appreciation by sharing what's really happening in my heart at the moment. As we're celebrating our 45th anniversary, there was something else that happened. A couple of weeks ago, I got a panic phone call from my daughter in Canada. She said, Dad, 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 what am I doing? Lyo is going, uh, is being picked up by the ambulance. It turned out that somebody at his work was really eager to keep his work. When I say keep his work, the guy had an, a job by standing, opening doors, and it was an important job for him because it was his livelihood. I understand that. In the process, he had that virus, that COVID virus that he was spreading around. My son felt oozy, so he stayed home a couple of days. And then he got a letter from his boss to stay in quarantine because it was important to make sure that he was not sick. A few days later, I get a panic call from my daughter. And as my son arrived in the hospital by ambulance, there's a problem. That problem was he died. Two minutes without oxygen. They resuscitated him. In other words, they reanimated him and he was back to normal. I was told. Several weeks later, it turns out that my son from Brampton, Ontario, is flown by Orange or brought by Orange, that is the ambulance services in Ontario, from Brampton to Mount Sinai, first in the Children's Hospital and later on in Mount Sinai, ICU. What the hospital, the initial hospital in Brampton forgot to mention was that my son had for 10 to 50 minutes been on very low oxygen before he got hooked up on the machines. And that in itself caused my son to be in coma. And this is the 11th week. As my wife and my daughter are coping with it and we're dealing through Zoom meetings on a daily basis, actually every other day we have two to four hours that we're spending like a normal family through Zoom. And we're talking and praying and singing. And my wife and my daughter are just chit-chatting like normal with Lionel laying there. And I tell you, it is hard to see a son that is only half your age, totally in coma, not knowing what is going on because of some political position of somebody. I don't know what your position is as regards to COVID. But I know one thing, my mind has changed. If you are not in favor of an N95, a mouth cap, I don't know. But I do care your life and I do care for others. So I make sure I take precaution. 
And when I talk about this, I want you to understand what the pressure is on the family, what it does to your immediate family. And on June, for some strange reason, June the 2nd, I turned 71. But today, before I turned 71, the ambulance came over to double check. They wanted to make sure that why could I not breathe because my lungs had been filling up with fluids. And I didn't know that. All I knew was that I had a very hard time breathing. I didn't suffer of COVID. It was something else called high blood pressure. All the stress related to this and also the lifestyle for years and years and years. People told me I had high blood pressure. So what we do? What does it really mean? I had no clue. I've had high blood pressure. But somewhere, somehow down the road, the price was paid. And in the same time that my son was in the hospital, I had to go to hospital in Holland to make sure that the doctor understood, the specialist understood what is happening with my heart. And folks, that pressure, what are you going to do? I'm not a holy roller. I'm far from it. Some of you guys know that we had a very rough time. But you know, what I've learned is to be totally open, transparent. Honesty is what brings you where you want to be at the end pole. The end price is peace. And that is actually what I wanted to share with you. I need some help from you folks that you all want to keep us in prayer. It's not easy. And sometimes it breaks me down. Yes, folks, you can handle it when you go through it yourself. When I was sitting in the hospital, not knowing how, what, and where, as I see other people sitting there in the same department, their heart is failing and something is falling apart. You see people giving up on life. But when your own son is in hospital, and you can't do anything. You're reaching out. And I'm reaching out, folks, and I'm asking help pray. Would you pray for my son and lift him up before the Lord? Because we need your help. Yes, there is much more. We want to go over there and be there with him because of this, the support. They're talking now long term. That means in coma for the rest of his life, according to the doctors, or till we pull the plug. But I'm not pulling the plug. I'm asking, would you support me? God bless you. Bye for now. Actually, I don't want to quit yet. I want to pray for those that are facing the same or worse. Because I realize I'm not the only one. There are hundreds of people, hundreds of people that are facing challenges daily, whether it be politics or the money or whatever misery we are facing. Heavenly Father, Abba, I come to you and I bring this matter before you, Lord. So we prayed so many times and so often. We thank you, Father, that we have a Father that is willing to listen. I'm reaching out through Facebook because I realize keeping my mouth shut and not saying anything doesn't help anyone. Father, I ask you, Lord, to wake up Lyle. It's now the 11th, almost 12th week that he's going into coma. Father, lift him up, wake him up, get him out of that coma. And when he wakes up, Lord, that his brain will be renewed. Father, I thank you, Lord, not only for Lyle, for his brain and for everything that is related to his body, Lord, all the oxygen that has to go to his heart to his liver, to his spleen, every part of his body, angels of life. I urge you, touch my son, but also our hearts, my heart, but those that are suffering with heart failure, I lift them up before you. And if they don't have heart failure, those with pain and sorrow, Father, if we, we are poor and we need to be restored. I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. That's each and every one. 
And thank you, Father, that we may reach out to others. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you, Lord, for breaking through. And now as our anniversary, 45th anniversary, Lord, my wife and I are together. That's a miracle. But also that we may see Lyo wake up and again talk and walk and be able to do everything. But we do urge you, Lord, that it may be this week. In the wonderful name of Jesua HaMashiach. Amen. God bless you. Bye for now. Thank you so very much for all your help and whatever you can do, it is so appreciated. God bless you all. Bye for now.